just uh, in a very short while organized and uh, have a very well, well overwhelming response. Okay, um, I won't say much, but um, I will just mention that I am uh, I have been practicing Jigo since I came to know about it a year, and uh, I'm very grateful to learn from Master uh, uh, Tan Su Kong, a uh, very uh, esteemed uh, Qigong practitioner. He's a founder of the Wellness Medical Qigong, having more than 30 years of experience in doing Qigong, and he will explain to you and share with you how he came about. He has trained many medical Qigong therapists including those days in Lam Hawaii Hospital, all right? And uh, when I started practicing with him, I was telling him, hey, you know, he should come over to my hospital and do chi, right? And unbelievable, within a year, he's here with me, and I'm so happy. So without much ado, time is an essence. I'll pass over to uh, Dr. Tan to proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pio, for your kind introduction. Uh, I don't know why you want to come and listen to such a dry topic. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> talking about qi, this hospital is with a lot of qi. Uh, I, have been visit <clears throat> I visit so many hospitals, and uh, joking, we happen to be from Germany. This weekend over here, and uh, both of them walking and saying, wow, the qi is so strong. So, I think you must have done a lot of good things, that's why the chi is so strong. Well, um, I hope you're not going to be disappointed with my sharing. I will just uh, share with you within the next one hour, a little bit about uh, what I've been practicing for 30 years. Uh, I think many of you do chi gong. Just now downstairs, a lady that came up saying to me, he asked me, what chi gong is that? Is it still the chi gong? I say you get to know later on. <laughs> well, I'm sure many of you are over here heard about Chico. Right? Otherwise, you won't be sitting here. Right? You may be curious about Chico. Uh, you've seen people practice in the park and so on and so forth. Uh, and then some, some people tell you Chico can do healing, whether true or not true. Is it uh, medically proven? Scientifically uh, make sense or not? So I hope I can uh, try to share with you uh, my little experience over the year. Okay? And later on, towards the, the, part, the last part of the talk, uh, you can ask me any question you'd like to. If I have an answer, I will share with you. If I have no answer, I will try to find an answer for you. Yeah? Is it okay? Yes. Right. Well, what is Qi really? We talk about Qi Gong, what is Qi? Uh, qi Gong or the word Qi is not exclusive to the Chinese. Yeah? Uh, every culture, they have something similar. For example, you go to Japan, they tell Qi. You go to India, they tell you Prana. Okay? This is something related to our body. Yeah? And uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to really translate this word Qi directly into English. You have to give a long sentence, what is Qi? But for the purpose of this talk, I just use the word energy. Yeah? So when I mention energy, I try to refer to Qi. And Qi Gong is an art of uh, energy. To enhance energy, to make sure you have a uh, uh, healthy flow of energy. Yeah? But why energy is so important? Let's uh, look at it later on. Yeah? And uh, there are various systems of Qi Gong. Most of Qi Gong are for wellness purpose. And wellness means you practice, you improve your health. Okay. Just like if you want to get healthy, what your trainer or your doctor tell you, exercise. Right, so Qi Gong is exercise. So exercise, I said exercise in a slightly different way. Instead of doing very physical exercise, which may have a risk of having a physical injury, you practice uh, an exercise in a very gentle way, which doesn't create any physical problem. Yeah? You don't, don't have a risk of uh, creating a wear and tear. Yeah, but it's also an exercise. So there are many of them out there. You ask me how many Tao Chi Gong, I can't tell you. Some people say 70,000, some say 100,000. But there are also Chi Gong that's for therapeutic purpose. Okay. And uh, let's take a look of a little bit of history of uh, Chi Gong. Let's think about this. Chi Gong is from China, approximately about 6,000 years ago. So 6,000 years ago, when somebody gets sick, what do they do? 
There isn't a hospital. You know, they have a nice hotel like this. Yeah? There's no Western medicine. Not even Chinese medicine, which is only about 3,000 years. So this is well before any known therapeutic uh, method that has been around. So what does the people do? Will they sit there and wait for their last thing? No, they will have to look for something. So from their experience, they know that when they do certain specific visualization, they get better. They are not thinking about the number, but just certain specific visualization. And uh, they make certain movement, certain specific movement, they get better too. When they make certain sound, they get better. And when they breathe in a certain way, they get better. So those are the wisdom that passing down generation after generation, and that is the uh, training methods of Qigong. So in Qigong training, you may move, you may breathe, you have to breathe by the way, you breathe in a certain way, yeah? and uh, you may do certain visualization, okay? or you make certain sound. Yeah? And uh, this four method, from whatever Qigong school you are in, you have to use at least one of these methods. Yeah? And so, medical Qigong was started 6,000 years ago. So 6,000 years ago, people used all those methods to improve their health, and they also realized when they reach a certain level, they are able to help other people to improve their health too. Okay? So we refer that kind of practice as medical Qigong. So in medical Qigong, there are two areas. One is to practice to improve your health, Next is uh, you can use your energy to help other people. How does it work? In both ways, I will, I mean, whether wellness or therapy, I will explain it as well. Yeah? And uh, then, around 3,000 years ago, you have so-called Buddhism Qigong, Taoism Qigong. They adopt the uh, original Qigong practice and they incorporated certain practice that uh, is for spiritual purpose. But they didn't do the treating other people, healing part. They do self-improvement in health, at the same time spiritual achievement. So we refer that kind of practice as uh, religious Qigong. In religious Qigong, the most common would be Taoism Qigong and uh, Buddhism Qigong. Approximately about uh, a thousand years ago, you have so-called Masha Qigong. Yeah? The most well-known would be the Shaolin Temple in China, where people practice to improve their self-defense skill. Uh, I remember many years ago, the Star newspaper used to bring in the Shaolin Temple troop to tour Malaysia. I think consecutive for about four or five years to raise funds. And what do they do? They did demonstration. Right? They put a spear on the troop, okay? and uh, they let the car go over the body and so on. But don't ask me to do that. Huh? <laughs> I used to do that actually when I was young. I, I started my Qigong for the martial arts Qigong, yeah, but I don't do that anymore. I just focus in medical Qigong. And uh, then there are people who just want to practice to improve their health. They call themselves a scholar Qigong practitioner. So, irrespective of the name of Qigong, Zhi Qigong, Wai Bang Gong, Ge Ling Qigong, uh, Wellness Medical Qigong, whatever name is not important. Yeah? But you have to look into the, how they practice and what is the objective of their practice. So medical Qigong is the one that uh, incorporated the module whereby you can help other people. Uh, as I mentioned just now, I started with martial arts Qigong without knowing it. I practiced that for more than 10 years until one day I was very fortunate that uh, I met a master who treated my uh, business partner with throat cancer in Beijing. And uh, with three treatment, his uh, throat cancer was like no more trace. So I was so excited. And uh, we went to Beijing. I was so fortunate to do a trip to meet that master. And uh, even more fortunate, the master actually really to teach me. So in the year 1990, this was the first time I heard of medical Qigong. Okay? I didn't know before that that Qigong can actually be used to help other people. And uh, I was so fascinated. I came from an IT background. So I do a lot of research. As an engineer, I want to know how things happen. Then even though the master tells me you can do treatment now, but I can't tell people to do treatment if I don't know how it works. So I did a lot of research. And as the more I researched, I found that actually Qigong is very, very scientific. Okay? Uh, that's, 
let's take a look over what I have discovered. Huh? Okay, so I want to share with you the principle of medical chief law huh? in the tenability part of it, instead of wellness. This is a photograph that I taken about three days ago in London. I just came back from London yeah? and I visited the National History Science Museum. I saw this poster. I took a picture of that. Yeah? And look at this. You want to have life, you have all the things that we all know, and they specifically put the word energy there. It's very important. So in other words, without energy, we have no life. So, not just energy, uh, so some people even refer to that as life force. However, this life force or life is something that you can't see, you can't touch. So therefore, it's very difficult to convince. Huh? I'll try to attempt to show you a little bit about what is energy today, if I could. So, uh, in the Qigong practitioner, uh, medical Qigong practitioner point of view, we look at the physical body, which consists of all the system, the cardio system, respiratory system, and so on and so forth. All these systems are supported by something called energy body. So you have a physical body that's supported by energy body. In the energy body, you have all the meridians, you have all the energy flow, and so on. And then all these are supported by the spiritual body. By the way, spiritual is not religion. Spiritual means how you think. Yeah. For example, if somebody every day thinks that they are sick, do you think the person will be sick? He will, because God will grant the prayer not to be sick, not to be sick. Yeah? So you'll be sick very soon. So you have to think that you are not sick. So that's spiritual. Because when you have a negative thought, you are affecting your energy flow. When you have an energy blockages, eventually you will manifest as a physical problem. Uh, I know there are many doctors here, you may not agree with me. But you tell people more than 80% of the problem is caused by stress. Right? So why, why caused by stress? Why stress uh, ended up with physical problem? Because in between there's something called energy. So when you have stress, you're creating a blockage. When you're creating a blockage, you will have a problem. Let's say if your finger you get a rubber band and tie it up. What happened to the finger? The fingertip? Eventually it becomes purple color, black color, and the whole fingertip drop off, right? So, why? Because there's a blockage in your circulation. It can be blood circulation, but blood circulation and qi circulation is very closely related. So your circulation get blocked somewhere down the line when you do not have uh, enough Blood circulation, there's no nutrient, there's no oxygen, and so on. So that part of the body will have problem. Okay? And that problem will, you get symptoms, you manifest out. You have pain, you have cough, you have this, you have that, right? So this is actually uh, how we look at it from the energy practitioner point of view. Okay? So therefore, our job is if a person has a physical problem, we look at from look at it from the energy point and see what can we do from the energy point of view. We we'll make sure that there's no blockages in the flow. We want to make sure that uh, yin and yang balance. Okay? And we want to make sure that uh, once the flow is okay, or your blood situation is okay, then you become healthy. That doesn't mean that you don't seek medical help. You also have to seek medical help. Okay? We have uh, actually do some social work in the Cancer Research Institute in India for five years. And uh, we work alongside the oncology. And we work together as a team. The oncology will look at the patient and suggest whether to do surgery, chemotherapy, or energy or radiotherapy. And uh, what we do, we make sure that the patient can go through all these therapies smoothly. They don't get the side effect of uh, nausea, they don't get the side effect of too low a uh, uh, white blood uh, count, and so on and so forth, so that they can have a smooth uh, treatment. And together, as a team, we give the best to the patient. Yeah. So that was what we experienced last five years in India. Yeah. So I'm not here to suggest that you look at just energy, but don't look at anything else. Yeah. We have to look at energy plus everything else, and that will be the best. So in the audience, you do have a, a physical challenge, 
that's the best I think I can offer you. That we, you look into your, you see the advice of doctor, at the same time, if you think uh, you need to look at the energy side, also take a look at the energy. Uh, in, in Penang, you are very lucky, because in Namoy Hospital, we have the, the Qigong practitioners there. You can go there and uh, get help with that. The energy body consists of three layers. Energy, by the way, is electromagnetic. Eh? Somebody call it bioelectromagnetic. Okay? And uh, electromagnetic, let's say, if it's a magnetic. The magnetic, let's say, for example, if this pointer is a piece of magnetic, what happens? If you take the needle, bring it closer, at a certain distance, that needle will get attracted and stick onto the magnetic. And because the magnetic force, the magnetic uh, field, actually go beyond this piece of object. So since our body is electromagnetic in nature, by the way, uh, if you go and do Google search, you type in 7.8, the three herbs will all come up, you press enter, you see there are a lot of information on that. That is known as Schumann resilient. And Mr. Schumann is the one to discover this. Yeah? And our body, electromagnetic force is also 7.83 hertz, which is exactly the same as the Earth. So we're very lucky. The Earth is a piece of big magnet that try to regenerating our 7.83 all the time, especially when we are asleep. So when we are asleep, we are relaxed, our energy field open up, the Earth energy will try to tune us back to 7.83. However, today's world is very different. A lot of youngsters, they are very different. They sleep very early. During my time, early means 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Now, early means 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 a.m. Yeah? So they slept too early. They don't have enough time to uh, more or less regenerate. So therefore, they are prone to a lot of uh, physical problems. Yeah? So the energy will gradient up from our body and form a layer. In the body along the meridian line, okay, we refer that as internal energy. And when it radiates out of the body, we call it external energy, external chi. Okay. And uh, at the skin level, it's called protective energy or protective chi. So internal chi radiating out to the body as external. In the new age term, we call this like aura field. Yeah? Aura is actually a the yoga, uh, I mean, uh, Indian terms. Uh, in the Chinese medical qigong or Chinese uh, med, uh, qigong system, we refer as external qi. For those who understand Chinese, called wai qi. Lui means inside, wai means outside, wai qi. So if you are healthy, you have a healthy, strong internal qi, your field will get uh, bigger. Yeah. If you are weak, your field get lesser. Say for example, now all of us in this room, our energy all interconnected, whether you like it or not. Because your field will connect with the one next to you. So whoever next to you, energy will affect you. So in a way, if you are working, uh, if your career is those that you have to uh, really interact with a lot of people, let's say you are a masseur, you are a trainer person, even a doctor or uh, surgeon, you are also always prone to uh, external energy factor that affecting you. Yeah? You can be affected by your equipment, your equipment and radiation, you can be affected by your patient, you can be affected by many things. But don't worry, you go back and sleep early, you'll be tuned. But not 4 5 a.m. Huh? Make sure it's 10, 11 p.m. Yeah? Uh, but how do you how do we know? Is that really the case? Yeah? Maybe uh, at this point in time I'll do a little demonstration. Yeah. I will use a method called dowsing method. Anybody know dowsing? This is just a pair of uh, metal rope, somebody knocking the head. Uh, this is Qigong, by the way. This is used uh, by a lot of people to look for water. In the olden days, we, we, uh, we drink from the well. Where do we dig the well? You cannot just simply go to a spot and try your luck. And then after uh, hard work, there's no water, you cover it up and try the next spot. 
you'll be wasting a lot of time, right? So you use this to look for water. Because when water flowing underground, you create a friction, which will be generating some radiation. And this metal, this metal will be affected by that. So this metal can actually detect energy. So later on, I'll demonstrate to you how we do, do it, how do we do that. Huh? And uh, then, as we progress, we see what happens. I'm not going to steal the show. Yeah? And uh, recently, somebody told me, even uh, the, the Naga National, yeah, when they erect the power, the, what call it, the power, the big uh, power, they also use it to check, make sure there's no underground water. They're afraid that when they power the water shoot up, they get into trouble. Yeah? So this is a proven method, but this is how she go, by the way. Yeah? Okay, can I have a volunteer? Any volunteer? Uh, I will test him later on. Because he just came yesterday. He's my student. I'll make sure he practice. I, can, I will tell whether he practice or not. Anyone? the advantage of having bigger chi? Because your chi, there's a vibration, there's a point three is standard, right? So if anything want to penetrate into your internal chi, you have to go through that layer. So if your layer is stronger, bigger, that means you will actually have better quote unquote protection. Yeah? So you know, in a, in, if I say you have a young baby, some baby they are grown to sickness and so on. You know what the parents will say? Uh, they born very weak. What born very weak? Actually, they are very low protective chi. Yeah? So, that is uh, just a little bit about actually energy cannot see, cannot touch. However, they are really something called energy. Okay? So, the energy body in the modern science research, they found that the physical body actually is an organized field of quantum vibration. Energy, uh, don't quantum vibration just to depress people, okay? <laughs> just, just, a, just a, uh, the physical organized field of energy that connected to and form part of the atmosphere and the universe. You know, all energy is connected to each other and together we can be uh, affected by our environment. So therefore your function master say don't live next to the Cemetery. 
hospital, hospital is quite okay. <laughs> it's better to live near hospital within five minutes. <laughs> they say don't live below the high tension wire, don't live next to the generation generator. Why? Because all this emitted radiation, and if you are constantly affected by the radiation, your 7 way 3 get affected. When your 7 way 3 get affected, what happened to you? You are prone to have sickness. Yeah, so there's a reason why. Huh? It's not. Uh, then you have to throw them away. <laughs> but don't throw, huh? give to me. Okay. And any of this impurity within the human body will manifest the physical body as illness. So your energy has problem eventually become a physical problem. And this is from research. This is not for me, okay? I just extract this out from research. So therefore it's so important for us to have good or healthy energy. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, for, uh, drawing and also photograph, which I was very lucky over the year of practice and we were able to take it uh, so that you can, you can really so far see the energy. Now if you look at the, read the books, the entire energy looks like this or looks like this. Those of you practicing yoga, they say it's a different, different color, different aura. Those of you practicing qigong, they say it's a, a north and a south pole. Yeah? Take a look at this. This is a normal scenery. Yeah? I think it's taken in a, I can't remember, Cameron Highland or somewhere, one of the resort. Yeah? But look at this. This is not because the land is not clean. Yeah? We call this energy ball. So there are a lot of this energy around us that we cannot see. Yeah? Uh, and don't ask me what camera we use. It just happened. It happened that we snack and then get something like that. Yeah? And uh, this one, look at this. And in the year 2008, we actually did a big workshop with the Star newspaper in KL. And uh, we, we have a hall that day with about 300 practitioners there. We practice the Qigong. And, uh, we're all of us are very, very busy, so we get somebody to help us to take picture. And uh, I was at the, on the stage, and I, I know something is not right with this person, I don't know what to do. So I try to take the earliest poss uh, possibility to get down and talk to this uh, so called photographer. I say, hey, What happened? It is. See, fool, something wrong with the camera. I say, What? And he showed me a picture. You see, where I aim at you all, it looks very clear, but the moment you move, the whole thing becomes blurred. I said, no, this energy, they are very lucky, can, cannot take it. So that two days, they had taken about a few hundred shots. We win a few hundred shots, about five or six that happened like this. Yeah? So I shared with you. Yeah? When we move, this energy start coming up. And that was me in the last run. Yeah? This energy come up. Yeah? And I was uh, invited to Tasmania, did a talk. And uh, it was a very interesting talk, it was at night. A very small group, 10 over people, they're all healers. Some come with a head, long one, some come without shoes. <laughs> they're all very interesting people. <laughs> and after the talk, uh, they asked me to do something, so I did some healing for a couple of them. If you look at all this, this like, uh, on the computer screen is clearer, it's like rainbow color. Okay. And this color intensified when, I, when we send energy. Okay. Without send energy, the color was not there. Not that bright. So all these are show you that actually there are something as per what the textbook says. Right? The textbook never just dream of that drawing. We actually come up with something. And uh, it happened uh, it happened that we have an opportunity to took a couple of shots anyway. Let's talk about this as well. Yeah. So how Chi Kong really heals? The Qigong healing, uh, by the way, the, the American Qigong, WHO classified us as uh, energy medicine, power oh, energy medicine, okay? And uh, the Qigong practitioner uses energy to treat the patient. I talk about blockages, so they use certain technique of blocking. If the uh, patient has weak energy, we use technique to enhance it. Okay? And when the person's energy is not balanced, we use certain technique to balance it. That's about it. Okay? We unblock, we enhance, we balance, 
and to achieve a healthy uh, energy flow. So by doing that, the uh, patient health will be able to uh, improve. Yeah. And the uh, technique we use, we can touch a patient, we don't touch a patient, we can even do something very controversial, distant healing. So he's in Germany, I don't use handphone. I just say I send energy to him. Yeah? He'll be able to receive energy. Yeah? I did actually did some uh, healing for people in Germany yeah, of uh, a certain health issue. Okay? So that's how we do it. There's a, there's a person, a gentleman by the name of Bruce Lichter. I don't know where you heard of him. I think if you talk to uh, alternative uh, medicine uh, practitioner, most have heard of him. Hey, Bruce Lichter spent about 40 years research, and 40 years ago, his uh, research is part of his research today, we call it uh, stem cell. Okay? He actually do research into the cell, he's the uh, cell biologist, okay? and uh, he actually wants to understand the cell better. He therefore, he understands the energy very well. So, according to his research, our energy is stored at the cellular level. Energy at cellular level, and it is at the cell membrane. When our energy is fully charged, which is around 70 to 90 NV, NV means over a million volt, yeah? All the membranes will form some kind of pores. All these pores open up because the, but the cell have to absorb food, have to discharge waste through where through all these tiny holes. Yeah. So when they are fully uh, charged, it looks like this. This is a healthy cell. All nutrients coming, all the waste can be discharged okay? because the uh, cell membrane is fully charged at seventy ninety. However, if the energy is not fully charged, less than 70 MV, it will look like this. Okay? So, nutrient partially can be absorbed, partially can be rejected because the hole is blocked. Yeah? And the waste partially can be discharged, partially can retain back in the cell. So imagine if you don't go toilet for many days, what happens? you will not be healthy. So same thing happened to the cell. So if the cell like this becomes unhealthy, when it's unhealthy, slowly this cell will become a cyst. If you don't correct it, it becomes a tumor. If you don't correct it again, it becomes cancerous. So from the energy point of view, we suggest that the unhealthy cell should be charging to bring the energy back to 790. If that's the case, there's a good opportunity that this unhealthy cell will become healthy cell. So over the years of practice, we've seen many of such cases happen. And uh, so therefore, when you practice Qigong, whether the movement, the breathing, the uh, sound, okay, not so much of visualization, the patient actually use an angular method. You are actually recharging every single cell to bring every single cell back to 1790. So that's the basic of how Qi Kong help you. If somebody sends energy to you, they are actually helping you to, to uh, double charge. Okay, so you practice yourself. Somebody actually give you the energy and uh, you know the, bat the car battery someday a week, you jump start. <laughs> so somebody will jump start. Okay. Well, of course, you don't let someone to jump start you all the time, right? So when somebody jump start your battery, your battery should run also. You want the battery to run and take over itself. Yeah? So you should also uh, do something to constantly maintain that. Yeah? So that's what happened. So when you do that, you uh, restore the main potential back to 70 to 90. You open up all the pores, increase oxygen, remove waste. And uh, in my clinic, we don't have very sophisticated uh, equipment, so we use very simple method to test this theory, whether this theory really works or not. So we use something called live blood analysis. You take a drop of blood, put on a very uh, powerful microscope, look at the profile of the blood, okay? and you can see uh, the, uh, how the cell looks like, and so on and so forth, how the blood flow and all this under the microscope. So we did that, and I'll share with you this happened to be a nose cancer uh, patient. We took the blood sample, okay? 
So the blood will form like this. After five minutes of uh, giving this patient energy, okay, and uh, the blood will form like this. Yeah. So uh, you may not understand what is that. Yeah. But this one looks like a travel highway during a busy day, traffic jam. And this one looks like maybe midnight. Somewhere midnight now, there's also a jam. Okay. By the way, each of these is one blood cell, one red blood cell. Okay. So the, all the red blood cells all stick together. So when the red blood cells stick together, what happens to the blood circulation of this patient under this condition? Not so good, right? Okay. Well, so when your red blood cells open up, the flow is much better. So therefore, the circulation of this situation is much better than this. So, if you look at this, you will, you will probably know that if a person circulation constantly like this, with a lot of oxygen uh, in there, then this person's health condition should be better than anybody with this circulation. Right. So that's how she can help you. And uh, this one is somebody practice. Okay. Of course, if you practice, uh, like joking just now, this energy is here. Most probably, you plus circulation is like that. Yeah? And uh, if, let's say, you, if you don't practice, you slowly go back to here, eventually become like this. So this is somebody who have not practiced. Before practice, after practice. Uh, 30 minutes practice. So if you practice it correctly, you don't have to take hours. Okay. It takes 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You practice, and then you will be able to improve your health condition if you regularly practice. Yeah. So that's uh, what happened to the uh, right. Okay, maybe at this point I take a pause. Okay. Uh, we are talking about somebody help you, give you energy, and it changes the energy. Can I invite you back again? transfer, how to uh, influence somebody's energy, it can just happen instantly like this. And uh, so sometimes I remember years ago, uh, my wife is now practicing alongside with me, but uh, some about almost uh, 15 years ago, she said she, she helped me, I was used to be for IT, and then I, I one day I tell her, I said I'm going to give up my business, okay? and I want to uh, pursue my passion. To move, she go. She said, okay, good, good, good. So she's uh, helping me become reception, collecting money, 
all the next three new work, which is very important also, but she never practiced because she said she goes for old people. <laughs> and then what changes her is there was a case. There's this lady, I remember when she came and saw us, was eight months old. She had a genetical problem. It's known as a CDLS syndrome. CDLS. I was told in Malaysia there are about a dozen babies have this syndrome. Maybe they call a genetic problem. They were born uh, something missing. You don't know what. Maybe no eye or the heart of no or whatever. But this baby she born looks quite normal. But the problem is, when she was three months old, she cannot take any milk. Cannot be treated. Every time you feed her one mug of milk, she will warm it up. Maybe one bottle of liquid. Don't know from where. So when she saw me at uh, eight months old, she was only uh, I think about two kg. It's worse than a premature baby. Okay? Uh, the doctor told the parent that yes, it, we can't do anything for the baby. Uh, so the the father is a Swiss, the mother is a Malaysian. So they seek all kind of help. You tell them anything, whether spiritual, religion, they try everything. And then one day she read the newspaper about us, and she. Caught, the father caught. So when the father caught, my wife can recognize the accent. This guy calling from Switzerland or what? Because uh, her sister married to the Swiss, so eh? she can recognize the accent. So anyway, cut the whole story short. She came in and I did the uh, healing for her. And uh, every time she come in, the first time, first two times they come in, they came with a big bucket. First time came in, the baby come in with a big bucket. After they left, we uh, repent, uh, we go see and say, How come this is not valuable, well, not leave in the car, nobody wants to steal it. Yeah? And the second time, still like that, so we couldn't have us, hey, Why you bring this thing in? Uh? They say, We don't do dirty or fraud. Because you know when she's going to warm it. When she warm it, the fountain coming up. Yeah? So therefore, we just want to prevent she warm it, we put underneath, so that uh, no problem. So we treated her, and uh, five months later, uh, vomiting get less. She was able to have one full feed of one bottle. And uh, instead of every feed, she warm it. Uh, she warm it maybe once a day or once in every two days, and she start putting on weight. And today she's uh, 15 years old. I, I want to read this for you is because we have a job that we just try our best to help everybody that comes across our path. We do not know. Because Energy healing is at certain level. We really do not know what happened. Seriously, I'm not a doctor. Okay? I do not know. Okay? Many of you in this audience will be much more knowledgeable than me. But what we do is we just have a... That's what tagline is called healing and compassion. We just help whoever we can. We just use energy to help this person's energy and let the body work. And also this case changed my life, uh, my wife's life, because we literally see what happened to this baby that grow. Every time she come in, very often they get scolded after they left. You know why? Because the baby is so young, I carry it here, I say energy like this, like carrying the, my grandchildren, and then, and then pass it back. And then after they left, they say, hey, why you spend five minutes with her and then you stop? People come out of the way, why don't I spend one hour? I say, no, cannot, this baby is too weak. If I give her too much energy, she couldn't take it. You know, because I don't want to give energy, couldn't take it, right? Just like, you know, sometimes you are too weak, then you say, oh, uh, what happened to you? You start breathing, you know, it, you cannot take it, your body couldn't take it, you just have to give enough, this enough, yeah? So, very, very thankful to, to that patient. Uh, not only she's, she's still a special child, by the way, but she able to communicate with size signal and all this thing, and she's uh, 15, more or less, a record for this kind of children. And uh, my wife, because of that, started to learn Shiko. And today, I always jokingly tell her, she's my biggest competitor. <laughs> she has a room before my room. So patient to pass the room first before come to my room. Sometimes they turn the room and I say I lost a patient. <laughs> but I'm happy. So they can come here and give talk and so on. She's working in, in the clinic.
Okay, and uh, what I did to Madam Chua just now, at first, Chua, Chai, Chai. At first, I didn't touch her, I put my hand behind her back. Yeah. That one, not yet, not yet. That's the second one, the second one. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I need chat also. <laughs> okay, so I, what I did is, I put my hand in the back. You know, energy, body is about one and a half meter. I put my hand about approximately, about maybe, I don't know, how, how far? About a foot away, yeah? So it's within the energy field. So therefore, I'm using my energy in corrupting the energy. Yeah? And by doing that, I intensify the energy. That's what happens to you. That's why your energy gets bigger. Yeah? And why I zoom, you're yeah, very observant. Yeah? Because that's how the energy runs. Energy runs from the back and come to the front. You go a circle like this. Then in the Qigong term, those of you practice the Qigong, this is called Xiao Zhou Tian. Inner orbit. Or uh, you want to be a better name? Microcosmic orbit. <laughs> micro, micro means small. La. So I got inner, which Xiao Ma Xiao is small. It's a small circle that running in the body. And that small circle that runs in the body, medical is very important because it is coincide with your nervous system. You know, when I send energy to a patient and boost up the energy flow along the inner orbit, you go through a central nervous system and atomic nervous system. Okay? And uh, from that nervous system, you branch out to all the organs and all the glands. So later, I'll show you a case in Singapore. This lady lost all her hair. Not all, uh, still left a bit. Uh, hair loss. Okay? Because of hormone imbalance. And she, she practiced Qigong every day, twice a day, for two months, her hair cut, grow back. But don't get see me, they have no hair. Eh? <laughs> I'm joking, don't see me. Eh? <laughs> so, her case, because of the balance, uh, the hormone imbalance. So, when she practices, it's stimulating all the flow, stimulating all the hormone production. Therefore, after two months, the hormone grow back and the hand grow. Yeah? So, that's how, how it works. And just like talking about putting my hand within the energy field, I interrupted her energy. Of course, I do it in a proper way. Lah. I can also show a little demonstration. What happens if I interrupt somebody's energy? Yeah. Uh, can I have a volunteer? A man? Yeah, okay. Whoever. Radiation from the high tension wire, radiation from the from the uh, 
the power station and so on. So if you constantly get interrupted, your energy can be affected. Maybe you do a, another slide, a small demonstration. Can somebody volunteer with a handphone? Someone? Strong man? Anyone? Come, 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 come. come. Bring a handphone, huh? Not dry, wet, you know. 
And then after I did for her, then uh, she came back a week later. And uh, I said, I think it's too early for you to ask you what's the problem. No, no, it's too early. She's surprised. I'm much better now. They look, they look at your shop. They said, you should have taken a picture the last time. Why don't you take now? So I took. Okay. And the third time she visited it was like that. After that, she was okay. So uh, how it worked, I don't know. And uh, we have even structural problem. Some of the accident, if you look at the, look at the, uh, the, the case, in fact, uh, I, have, uh, I have an orthopedic and then my class, he saw this one, he said, unbelievable. Later, I'll show a video how we treat her. Yeah? And uh, after treatment, in back to normal. Yeah? And uh, this is a cancer case, for a terminal cancer. But this one, uh, you see, from uh, 2006 to uh, 2007, it was what, 14 months. 14 months uh, work. Yeah. And this is a baby I was telling you. Yeah. This is 2005, 2002. And uh, this is a lady I told you about the hair drop because of uh, hormone imbalance. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you have to see video or see a live demo? Live, huh? okay, live. That will leave you there first. Anybody have uh, migraine? Anyone? No? All healthy? Okay, please come. If the blockages occur at the neck, the, the head doesn't receive enough energy, it causes migraine. Yeah? So the solution works with the neck. So since you have some migraine experience, I try to attend to work on the neck and see what happens.
Okay, what happened is uh, I was trying to loosen the flow here. Yeah? And after loosening the flow, I was trying to check. Yeah? Trying to check. How do I check? It's for me to connect my hand, my set energy here, and I try to bring her up. You okay? Yeah. You okay, hear me? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, by, by the way, by the way, I never asked for the colors, but if it blow, uh, no baby. Because I blow so many of them, so I never ask. So you do like this. Okay, tell what. I will go through it quickly. After the talk, please go and see. Nothing. Yeah? So, so make sure you look fine. Yeah? So do upward, turn this upward circle. Use your upper lip and do an upward circle. Okay? And then use your chin, inward circle. Yeah? And then finally, most important, use your forehead to draw an infinity. So you go like this. If you hear cracking sound, that means your neck is very tight. Follow me. Follow me. So this is a tricky thing to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So that's how we uh, how we handle the different challenges. Right? Uh, so I try to get those very common ones. Anybody a back problem? Oh, she just tried to pull my leg. <laughs> and then just pull me. How do I know? Because she keeps on going back. I remember I talked about this. <laughs> remember I talked about this circulation go like this? So if it's smooth, we just go 
back and forth, very even. But you have any back power energy, you have stuck here. So it's stuck here, your body pull backwards. Yeah? So let's say semi. Then I have to reduce a little bit to go forward. So The body is reacting, try to clear the problem. Yeah? <laughs> I'm the conductor sending you music. That's a quick demo of how we work. Yeah? Uh, by the way, you want to be totally fixed, go and see Dr. Kyo. <laughs> but don't use a knife. Eh? Okay. You can do for quite easy. Yeah? Okay, so when uh, the turning is because the body wants energy to go through. Yeah? The energy goes through like this. So if the energy, if let's say the spine is okay, energy just go through. But you don't have to follow the star. So every different people with different different way, different of condition. Yeah? So here, the number layer I throw, energy can't go through. So imagine you have a, a rubber hose, you attach to a tap. You on the tap, the water will flow through. But if this hose is not straight, what happens? When the water pressure is strong enough, the hose will move to allow the water to flow through. That is exactly what happens to, to your reaction. So body reacted a certain way, want to release and let this energy go through. So in other words, indirectly, we are doing cell alignment, not me. So I only send energy. Yeah? The rest is your body reacting. So based on body reaction, we know what is the problem inside the body. Yeah? So uh, we don't have any X-ray X -ray eye, but by, doing, by looking at your reaction, you know what happens. Yeah? So this is uh, how we do the uh, our work. So I think it's probably time for question. Do you have any? No question? Either I such a bad presenter that you don't understand me at all, or I'm so good that you understand everything, yes? Uh, do, does our head have to face north, south, or what, uh, to align ourselves with the Earth's uh, active field or whatever? Uh, no, not necessarily. Any sign? Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about the direction. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, so that must have that. Um, well, last time a, uh, um, a Chico master came from uh, China mm. to, for a healing session. So I went for it, and then uh, for my back and all that, and uh, he put his hand over my head, and then he said that it was very difficult for my the chi to go through. I, I wonder why. Yeah, because the back problem, uh, what's the back problem? The flow is stuck, so cannot go through. Difficult to go through. So you have to find a way to get through it. <laughs> Any more? Uh, hello, uh, Master Tan. Just now you said that we should sleep at around 
10, 11. But uh, sometimes certain factors make us like we cannot sleep so early. So let's say we sleep at 1, but if you wake up later, that we still get around 7 to 8 hours of sleep, will that still affect our chi? Well, uh, if you want to go into very uh, detail of uh, Qigong, the art of Qigong, our uh, different organs, different meridian are uh, active at certain uh, time of the day. So between 10 to 2, the liver is very active. Yeah? So that's the best time to cleanse the liver. That means when you rest, the liver will be cleansed. So if you are constantly missing that 10 to 2, the first thing will show be your liver. You could have some uh, affecting your liver. Yeah? And how do you know the person uh, liver get affected? One of very common symptoms, the person get angry very easily. So if once a while it's just fine, but constantly like this is not so good. <laughs> yes? Hello. Uh, from what I gather just now, there are four types of uh, well, the movement that you can get. Four types of uh, practices. Uh, visualization, uh, the movement, breathing, and sound. Yep. Right? Now, can you tell us, uh, I mean, there must be an opt optimum way of getting uh, the best out of it, is it? Can you show us, uh, you know, for example, uh, in getting the best way of getting the cheap goal, uh, for example, the movement, or, or, or the breathing, I mean, it's, uh, these are the sort of two, uh, which, which I think that, uh, can you tell us how to do it, which, which is the best way to get the optimum? Very good question, but you need about uh, six months to tell you. <laughs> uh, because I cannot within the one hour to show you every one, what is the best movement, what is the sound, and so on. And there's no best movement with no best sound. But my advice is if you want to find one, you want to find one uh, that's uh, easy to do and uh, give you a lot of benefit, you choose breathing. Breathing, yeah? Uh? Because, just a minute, huh? because breathing, we talk about Qigong breathing, medically there's also diaphragmatic breathing, right? So it's quite similar, except diaphragmatic breathing just tell you how to use the diaphragm, but you don't know where is the diaphragm. Uh, Whereas in Qigong breathing, we have the five different types of breathing, you can use any, any one of them. Yeah? But uh, with that, you need about at least one hour. You want to know? We, uh, the gentleman sit on the left, your friend. Uh, he knows, he knows. Ask him. Okay? Ask him. Huh? Okay, sorry. So now you have a student teaching the breathing method, uh, the three method. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the question is do we have a medical young class for you to join? Uh, yes, I do come to Pinay by invitation whenever there's a need. Yeah, I'm not based here. I'm based in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. If you're interested in any class, and we are not organized to, to take that question, if there are enough people you're interested in, uh, maybe I can just give you my... Oh, that's my email address. You can write to me. Tell me about uh, Pinay, you want to attend the class. If there are enough people, I will do, I organize for you. Minimum number, like 1,000. <laughs> no, 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 it's about maybe 20. Yeah, because I have to, I have to stop seeing patients in KL, coming out here and so on. So we have to make the trip work yeah. You just write to me, just write to me, yeah? Then uh, any question about training? That's right, because I don't want to do, I don't want to be seen to do any marketing. You know. Yes, and then other question, technical question. Uh, 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 later. Yes? <coughs> just, 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 thank you. 
you mentioned that uh, there are three forms of uh, method to heal. One is by touching, which we know we just uh, witnessed. The non-touch, I think you did one or the non-touch, and then after that was a tap, which is a touch. So how do you do the distance healing? How do I do distance healing? Another, like one month. <laughs> this is his. How, the, how to, I can't, I can't tell you in detail over such a short uh, interactive talk, yeah. Well, we have a group of uh, practitioners in Kipping Nang. If you need help, you can write to me and link you up to one of them. Yeah? The best is go to, sorry, uh, go to another hospital. <laughs> I'll come here. Okay. Come and see her. She'll do it for you. I'm not clear of this Uh, it's very different. I happen to have some experience with that. Uh, with no offense, I just share with yeah. you my experience. Huh? Yeah. Not trying to offend anybody. Uh, once I was invited to go to Ipoh many years ago, yeah, and I stay in my uh, my student's house. And then he say, uh, after dinner, you have time to do some giving for my student, or my friend. Yes. Yeah. That night I have about ten or twelve patients. Yeah. And then finally, at the end of the day, I knew that they are all practicing what you practice. Yeah. So I was curious. If they are all practitioners, how come they all have to seek my help? Yeah. So that's why I, 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 I try to get to know more. But uh, maybe I talk. I will. I will talk to you. I will talk to you personally. Yeah. Yeah. Personally. Because when they call for class, it's sort of like, uh, like the person is say about 1,000 and they are they reach near 1,000 running. Yeah, yeah, at one point in time, so at one point, point in time, it is very, uh, at one point in time, it is very, very popular in, in, uh, in KL. Yeah, very, very popular in KL. So I happen to know what is it all. You, you can talk to me later on. Alright, thank you. Uh, yes, any other questions? Yes. Um, Master Tan, if my mom has depression and insomnia, um, and she's not willing to seek help. Can I learn and like try to heal her? If she has depression, she must do something herself. Very, very simple exercise. So even you learn, you can teach her, but whether she wants to do or not, that's a key factor. Yeah? Because uh, what we want to do is to give her exercise to stimulating the production of endorphin in the body. Does it mean I have to bring her to see you or something? You just have to know how to practice. You probably attend one class, just one class, yeah? And then uh, you know how to practice. And then there are certain exercises that can help her to stimulate her production of endorphin. The endorphin is a happy hormone. So hopefully over time, that will help her get out of her depression. But she must do something. Um, what about uh, dementia? You know, old people, my father has that problem. Short term memory losing. How long? Uh, when I discovered it was like um, six months. He's losing short term memory, okay. long term memory, no issue. Yeah, yeah. But short term memory is quite, 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 losing quite fast. So is there, is there a way that. It's, it's no, usually, when uh, such a patient, we will uh, advise them uh, a couple of things. Number one, we ask them to uh, stop taking carbohydrate. Okay? No sugar. No sugar. Because the, the reason is because if you stop taking any carbohydrate, by the way, once it digests, it becomes glucose. No sugar. So once there's no sugar and take into the body, the liver produces something called ketone. Okay? That kind of a condition is because there are not enough food for the brain cell. Okay? So uh, they couldn't 
take in the glucose that's given to the brain. So the alternative is a ketone. So you want the body to generate ketone so that the, the brain can resolve the ketone as a substitute for glucose. Yeah? So that's one thing. Second thing, very simple, ask him to use a fingertip to comb the, the combing hair. By doing this, you're stimulating your energy to the brain. You can tap, 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 you can do combing, but you must comb about at least 150 times every day. And then uh, another, thing, another supplement that may help. Sorry, I have to go out of the chicken with some of this dieting and uh, some supplement. Another thing that can help is uh, virgin coconut oil. Virgin coconut oil. Virgin coconut oil? Yeah, I know, but does that help? Uh, how long yeah. does it take? Because Every day, until it's conditioned. You know, how long does it take to see the effect? Because you try it, you do it. Do what? Taking this. Uh, virgin coconut oil? Did he stop carbo? Did he stop sugar? Ah, uh, no. Okay. There you are. So you have to stop that. Wow, Otherwise, the virgin coconut oil to actually help the liver to produce ketone. However, you have to stop your sugar. Otherwise, no use. Is this related to about you know, intermittent fasting where you do fasting, reduce alcohol, I'm sorry, reduce the sugar, it also stimulates no, the growth intermittent, and all intermittent not, not good enough. You have to long term doing that for, for a couple of months and see what happens. If you need any advice, go to, go to our, our therapy. Thank you very much. Okay, last question. Okay, no question. Thank you so much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to start anything more, just write to me on my email and tell me that you attended the talk here. If you have whatever question, I will reply you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.